Well, the month of November has a heavy focus on men's health. Movements like No Shave November, and you're probably also familiar with Movember, they were all created to help raise awareness of men's health issues, including prostate cancer. That's why in today's Medical Minute, I'm talking to a doctor from Saltzer Health about prostate health. Dr. Freeman, I want to talk to you about men's health, in particular prostate cancer. So first of all, what is prostate cancer? Prostate cancer involves the gland uh, known as the prostate, which sits just below the bladder. The urethra goes right through that. And so prostate cancer is simply an abnormal growth of those cells that involve the prostate. Okay, and why should a man be screened for prostate cancer? There's a really slow growing form that honestly, for the most part, we don't really care a whole lot about. Um, most men will probably get that form at some point in their life. However, there's a significant proportion of men that have a fast-growing aggressive form. Those are the individuals that we're after. Those are the ones that we want to find early and treat early so that they have a greater chance of living a long life. Okay, and what are the risk factors for prostate cancer? Risk factors include age. Any male over the age of 50 could be at higher risk for uh, prostate cancer. Anyone who is of African-American or black descent is at higher risk. And then also those that have a prostate cancer family history but also a cancer history, including the BRCA gene, which includes breast cancer. Those individuals will be at higher risk. Okay, so perhaps if a gentleman watching his mom had breast cancer, then they need to be more aware of the potential of prostate cancer in themselves. Absolutely. Okay, and let's talk about the symptoms. What are the red flags that prostate cancer may be developing? Any change in their normal urination stream would be a indication that they should be evaluated. That would often result in something uh, not concerning, but it's a really good idea to just be evaluated. And then a doctor and a patient can decide whether or not a further evaluation for prostate cancer is warranted. Um, that ex evaluation would include obtaining a PSA, prostate specific antigen blood test, sometimes a digital rectal exam. That is not always how we do the screening exams anymore. Uh, the digital rectal exam used to be part of the standard screen. It is not anymore. It's not recommended. However, if they have symptoms, we would go ahead with that step of the evaluation. Okay. And, and if something is discovered, though, in the exam, what happens next? So, first of all, it causes a lot of anxiety. And so one of the things that we would do is, is discuss that with them and then almost always have them seen by a urologist, a specialist in that area. That, that urologist then can talk to them about more specific ways of working that up, uh, such as imaging or even treating. Sometimes the elevated PSA is not associated with anything concerning. They may just need a round of antibiotics. Uh, once they have that evaluation, then it can be decided whether they need, they need to pursue something such as a prostate biopsy. And, and Dr. Freeman too, is there a recommended age group that should really sit down and have that conversation with their physician about being screened? Anybody with a higher risk of prostate cancer that we just discussed. And then really, I would recommend any male who's 50 years old have that discussion with their primary care provider. Just to see if they would be someone that would benefit from having that evaluation. Great. And where can people go to learn more? I love the Mayo Clinic. They have a great website. It has pictures, things that are put in a way that's easy to read and understand. Really a good website to find out that information.